<laughs> I did a video using the Chinese. Oh, hello. By the way, I'm Edward. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I did a video using the Kuma Kuro Mi collection from that Chinese makeup brand. And in the video, I was like, oh, but also in Korea, the K Beauty Band Roman released their Kuro Mi and My Melody shit. And instead of just tried to make it by myself. I was like, oh, it would be fun to do it with my friend Jason. So we did it again, ready with it together. But then when I went to edit the video, I realized my mic's memory card got corrupted. And so there's no audio for the video. <laughs> Starting over, but today I'm just gonna be trying to make it by, by myself. But I'm kind of glad because I'm starting to realize I keep trying this eyeshadow palette, but I don't really like it. But we'll get into that. First, let's start with the base. Yesterday, I got my third laser session for my beard. Well, my whole face, to be honest. They laser this entire bottom half of my face. It turns really dark for like three days. So I'm going to have to, besides my regular... The Sam Corrector. I'm also adding this one, this Tarte Shape Tape Corrector. And apparently... Apparently it's a vegan formula. This is normally meant for people with deeper skin, but for this extra dark pigmentation. Also today, she's got the full accessories. Literally in all my little get ready with me videos, I'm literally just wearing a chamot, my mahai, my clothing for sleeping. But today I figured I would um, match the vibe of uh, Miss Kuromi. Is Kuromi a boy or girl? Girl, right? Yes. Not me misgendering a... Uh, Sanrio character. I don't normally like to go dark with my color character like this because then I had to do more work with my foundation to cover the orange. But today I'll just hope so. Let's put a little bit of just a little bit of the, the green color corrector. Just right here. This is literally not a new cushion from Roman. This is their new zero cushion. And it's literally just like a new packaging. So I have talked many times about how my skin type right now at the age of 32. Am I 32? I think 32. Wait, am I 32? 31. <laughs> and so my skin has gotten more dehydrated. You know you have dehydrated skin if your skin feels tight and dry if you use cleansing foams or in general your skin is more on the dry side but you actually get oily in the middle of the day. That just means that your skin is lacking water. Also, if you're a makeup wearer, if you notice that your foundation tends to like crack, like the pigment is there, but then it just looks so dry and like scaly, you probably have dehydrated skin. Your skin is lacking water. So it's like trying to pull it from whatever's on your face. And what's on your face? Your foundation. So it's pulling the moisture from the foundation. And so you end up looking dry. This came out during the pandemic. So the whole point of this was to be like, oh, good for mask wearers. So it's supposed to, it's more on like the long wearing side. For me, it's definitely one of those cushions where I like it, but when I'm having a good skin day, if I'm having one of my like sensitive, rough, dry skin days, this will look like really gross after a while, but I'm actually feeling kind of good today about my skin. So, oh, let me show you the packaging up close. Cute, cute, cute. I love that this shit opens 180 degrees. This, every cushion, every eyeshadow palette, everything needs to do this because it makes it so much easier to use the thing. When it's open like this, it just, I hate it. The coverage, I think it's a pretty good medium. For my current skin, I don't know, I like liquid foundation more because I guess because I have dehydrated skin, more thicker foundations that have a little bit more like meat or like moisture to it tend to fare better on me. When it's thinner cushion formulas, those are the types of formulas that will end up looking really gross on my face later on. I'm just not at that age anymore where I can just be handling every type of uh, cushion. One of like the creators of Romance, Terom, she said that whenever she's making base products, her number one concern is pore coverage because she has like really enlarged pores on her nose. So with this, it really gives like a smooth effect to uh, really porous area as well. Oh, also the sponge in here is actually, they made it so that it's actually really hard and stiff. This was meant for people that are bad at applying cushions, like the type of people that will like dig into their cushions because that just gets too much product on there. Serum is always all about like, oh, or like adjusting the amount of product that you put on your face. So they made the sponge in there extra hard so that when you dip in, you can never get too much product on here. I think my beard is peeking out a little bit, but I, the skin gets really weird after a laser. So anything on top of this will look super heavy. So I'm just going to leave it at that. Uh, I'm going to quickly powder my face a little bit with this YSL pack. I literally bought this shit because of Rosé. I saw Rosé on the, as the model at the counter and I was like, I want to buy something from that brand. And so I did, but it's actually a really fantastic powder. I bought it during the pandemic. I was actually surprised at how well it held my base in. 
Uh, I used it in combination with the YSL cushion that came out at the time as well. I was like, wow, it really doesn't smudge that much on the mask. But now that we don't really have to wear masks outside, um, it's even better for me. Oh shit, I forgot to do my under eye concealer. Oh, hold on. This is gonna be important because bitch, the colors in this goddamn eyeshadow palette, I go on and on and on about how I'm like, oh, I'm a summer mute. I look really good in grayish colors. But girl, these colors do a really good job of making it look like I have bad, bad, bad dark circles. I'm not going too bright under the eyes. I'm literally using a corrector plus a shade of concealer that's darker than my skin tone. I don't know if it's just my YouTube feed, but I do not see beauty videos anymore, really. Unless I'm looking for a specific product, which I rarely do. Just beauty videos are not a thing these days. All that shit is on TikTok now, which is cool because, you know, honestly, I'm gonna be completely honest, a lot of beauty gurus are like, they all kind of sound the same, if that makes sense. Not saying that I'm special or anything, but it's like the same vocabulary, same, you know, phrases and shit that you say, like, oh, moisturizing, oh, that pigment, blah, blah, blah. And so it's totally understandable why a lot of people don't really watch beauty videos anymore, because it's a whole a lot of the same lot of nothing, if that makes sense. And with TikTok, you can get that shit in bite-sized pieces. You can get your review and leave. Well, to be honest, I if I want a review, I, will, I like to watch a little more form video, but TikTok is cute for like beauty tips and shit like that. But I got a message the other day from a subscriber that's been following me for a long, long time. It was a really sweet message. And he was like, oh, he said he was going through like a, you know, a hard time. And he was thanking me for making videos, you know, to help him relax and all that. And I was like, honey, that's why I make these videos. Because even for me, I like watching videos where, you know, you can just play it off in the background. So even if you're not watching, you person in the back cleaning your room or whatever, the shit is for you. Okay. I think I'm going to go straight in. Oh no, my eyebrows. <laughs> Let me do my brows. I'm not gonna do anything crazy. I'm just gonna fill in these sparse areas. Just right there. And right there. That's it. I don't know if I wanna use a brow mascara today. We'll see. I kinda hmm, I kinda don't mind the look of uh my blonde hair with dark the slightly darker brows today. As long as I keep them like this. If I'm gonna be going for this look, I keep them light and like you can see the actual individual hairs. I like using brow mascara because it matches to my, my blonde hair, but it kind of gives the look of like just a block of color. Sometimes you don't see the individual hairs because it's so close to my skin tone. I like seeing a little bit of the skin underneath the brows, but uh, let's go into the, uh, the eyeshadow palette. The Romand Kuromi Better Than Palette number 11 Cheeky Cheeky Garden. You can actually kind of see that I've been dipping in. So clearly it's a cool tone palette. Very low saturation, especially this part of the palette. Lots of grayish mauves. Here, it's more of like good for people that are summer lights, but here, this is definitely for like summer mutes. Me. Kunde? I don't know if it's because I've been, I'm more used to like Chinese makeup lately where it's a little bit more structural, but for this, I think it's because a lot of the colors are so similar in like saturation and like tone is that whenever I put them on, there's not a lot of difference between the colors and I feel like it just looks messy. <laughs> I just, and it also just makes you look so tired. I don't know why. We'll see. I, I really don't, I hope it's not going to be a case of like, I talk shit about it. And if the one day I try it on camera, that's when it looks good. I'm going to use this color here first on my lids. I think what it is, is that the colors are actually pretty when you only use like one color at a time. When you start laying the colors too, I did like this one color. This is like a fantastic everyday color for me. Like I would do this. If you're a cool winter, oh my God, this palette, perfect. Especially for you boys out there that are like buskers, K-pop busking. I recently did the makeup of this kind of like, they started out with busking, but they're like an idol group now in promoting mostly in Japan. A lot of them are actually cool winters, but most of the makeup that they do is for warm autumns, which is like the typical boy idol makeup, right? But I suggested them like, oh, you should definitely try colors like this because these, these are the colors that would really look good on you. Oh my God, not me loving this already. <laughs> No, but I like it here. Chiguma, I like it now. Next, I'm going to use this deeper taupey stone color just to add more depth here. Because I was saying that these colors are so similar in like uh, chroma. You can't really get structural looks out of this. It's mostly the hazes of color, which I guess is, could be a good thing, especially for if you're a uh, soft summers because uh, usually makeup on soft summers looks better when it's 
all completely blended rather than more structural like artsy fartsy makeup which if you can do that i'm so jealous of you but i mean even for my eye shape already i can't be doing that shit my brow is super protruded it's super low basically have no eyelid space i think my issue is that i've tried too hard to get like a look out of this palette right when i should just keeping it more like simple actually let me go with eyeliner now i'm going to use the black in here you don't really often find a lot of k-beauty palettes making those blacks anymore so it's not a super hyper intense black it's a very soft sort of a uh, muted black like it's basically almost a charcoal so i think it's better for either using it as a guideline for your eyeliner or blending out your eyeliner or more so just using it as like a shadow i was on tiktok and i found this cute little effect that people have been using that's originally meant to kind of check your uh i forgot what it's called people have been using it for their eyeliner and i was i tried it out like girl i've never had my eyeliner look so even uh like i do now so i'm gonna use this app to help me with my eyeliner i noticed that depending on how much of an angle you have this at, you can get more of a wing look. I'm not trying to go for a wing. I want more of just like a straight across. So I'm going to tilt this so my head is kind of level with the camera. Oof. Yes. So good, especially for people with eye shapes like mine where your, hood, your upper lid just droops down. Yes! The red line does make it a little bit difficult to see where you're put, putting the liner because it's not what the original purpose of the apple was. So that's why I think it's better to use a powder eyeshadow first to kind of stamp on the general area. And then if you use liquid liner, then you can, you know, use that to give you a precise line. But So I only worked on the top half of my eyes on purpose. I'm gonna go in with these two. This is where it starts, like just doing the top lids like that is good for every day. But when you start doing this lower lid shit, then it starts to look a little bit more smoky. I was going to say, actually, this palette, it would look so cute on like uh, and those girls that really love like that Harajuku style with like the cute little fluffy shit. But like they kind of do like the more gothic version of that, where it's like a lot of black and like pink in there. This eyeshadow palette would look so, would complement that look so well. <sighs> I'm going to need a concealer pencil. I'm going to use this pale, shimmery, pinkish white shade to kind of go over that pencil. This is going to give like super hyper like Egosa, but it will just kind of brighten under slightly. And then I'm going to use this cute little shadow with the skull in it, Yogi Ape. And then kind of like the back end. I like using more reddish shadows there because it almost mimics the look of your waterline. Makes your eyes look bigger. At least I think it does. And then the original base shadow we used, right here. I'm gonna use a little bit of that darker taupe to smudge out this black liner because I don't like how it's like this weird looking little thing is what I'm trying to say. Oh, and also a little bit of the same shimmer that we used on the Agus hire on the inner corner. There's so many mid-tone colors in this palette that you need to add both highlight and like dark aspects of makeup instead of like eyeliner or mascara to balance because if it's all just mid-tones it will look muddy and messy because it's just they're all like the same level of darkness if that makes sense oh my god not me liking this already <laughs> oh my god not me switching up there's this like chunky glittery shimmery shade in here it's just okay i think it works better when you just oh uh, oh uh, not me switching up i need to shut up this is Oh, I really like it. <laughs> Something I wanted to do that I think would look kind of cute is because I didn't really touch these pink palette, these pink shadows. I'm gonna dip into these. And actually, add a little bit here because it's also just gray, which is a look. But I think just adding this pink would add like almost like a blushing effect. And here, <gasps> not the switch up. <laughs> I'm gonna put mascara now, but I do kind of want to lift my outer eyelashes a little bit. So I'm gonna burn this just so I get a little bit of lift. That didn't show anything. <laughs> I was watching Busking the other day in Hongdae with my friend. We ran into a subscriber of, I believe, Buddy and Cherry. And she was like, I'm a lawyer and I love watching your stuff. Because apparently her job is boring or something. <laughs> Did she say she was a lawyer? I believe she said she was a lawyer. And I was like, <gasps> the reach. Mascara. Hard job. Hard job. Um, more so, uh, maybe just here in the center of the bottom. 
I think I do want to add a little bit more of this pink though as like a blush, kind of dripping down from the eyes. Rather than just using blush today. Oh, it's pretty. Jumpman. Oh my god. That's actually really fucking cute. <laughs> Let me add some to my nose. Actually, do I regret that? I think I do. Maybe that wasn't the move. Hmm. Okay, now let me contour my face. I'm using this MAC one. There's a highlighter in here, but I kind of want to use this in here. It's basically like a highlighter shade in here. So I kind of want to try that as a uh, highlight. Not the move. Just gonna use the one in here. A lot of switching up happening in this video today. What the fuck? Uh, oh, God, not me liking this. <laughs> bake, bake, bake. Oi. So there were like four lip tints that came out of this collection. I believe two of them were already ex existing colors in their dewy full water tint line, but they added two new colors and all of them were just in this new cute little limited edition packaging. I believe Chikitaro was the limited edition one. This shit, I, I saw this and I was like, that's it. That's the one. Kunde. I tried it. I don't really like it. And then there's this one, Custard Mob, which I, I don't remember if this was one they already had or not, but because it came out too warm and too cool. But this one, she said that it's good for both cool tones and warm tones. If you're a warm tone and you want to, you know, you want a cool tone makeup day, this is the kind of tint she said that she recommended. The stain is exactly the same color as the tint. I've been seeing a lot of shorts or TikToks or whatever of like, apparently amongst the small business owners that are making lip gloss or whatever, they talk about how like color changing lip gloss is like really popular right now. But I think it's funny because that specific pink that all of those color changing whatever products turn into from K-Beauty brand's perspective, they hate that color. They say that if you have a tint or whatever color it is, if it stains to that specific pink, they say it's not a good quality lip product. Obviously, if you're buying something for a specific color, you want it to stain if it's going to stain to the color that you're buying, right? But if they all end up staining that one pink color, especially if it's a very strong pink color that not everyone suits, but whatever, it's selling well apparently, so. How about we try this? Let's try the Cheeky Taro as a base. I thought it'd be really cute muted mauve, but it's a very, it's actually quite bright on my lips at least. Filling in the whole bottom lip, then the inner part of the upper lip and some on the cupid bow. Yeah, I don't know. It looks too light for my face. It's a really pretty color, but I think this suits light summers much more than for me. My face originally doesn't take to color very well. So now I'm going to take custard mauve, which I don't know why this is even called mauve because it's not mauve. Just use that in the center. I'm using a bullet brush to pat out the edges so it looks more soft because I do not like the look of a uh, harsh lip lines. I think together they look cute. The first color definitely I don't think I'm gonna go back to it, but if I had to, I would definitely use it as a base color to a, a like a stronger cool tone lip. So yeah, I, I definitely like I tried this one as by itself as well. I did not like it, but together, got pajana. And then they have the their gloss, Glasting Water Gloss in Meteor Track. This is just a repackaging of the really popular lip gloss. What I do love about Roman glosses is that the applicator is this flat silicone tip, so when you use it. Can just wipe it clean and dip it back in. The way that I've seen people use their lip glosses to have the fuzzy lip applicator, fully made up lipstick lip, dipping it back in. And then you see at the bottom of their lip gloss, it's all mixed and nasty. Oh my God, I hate it. It's an okay lip gloss. I never really liked this formula that much just because I feel like something like the REM Beauty lip gloss is much better because uh, it smooths out. This one, it doesn't really smooth out my uh, wrinkly ass butthole lips. So she done it. She switched up. <laughs> like I said earlier, I think the problem was I was trying to get too many. I was trying too hard to make a look out of it, but I actually still ended up using all the colors in the palette, but creating this kind of look. Um, it's definitely not my everyday look, to be honest. If I'm gonna wear this look, I definitely have to wear something that will look good with it. Other than that, I really like it. I forgot to say the formula kind of sucks though, because it fades away after like three hours. So you need to use an eye primer. Huh? Yeah. 
that was it. I don't know what the point of making this video is because I pro it's a limited edition product that's probably not gonna it's probably gonna be gone in the next it's probably gone now. But hopefully this made for another good like background noise video for you. Anyway, bye. <laughs>